Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now it has been a great time to be an Atari fan because, well, in addition to the Atari 50th anniversary celebration collection of games and interviews, well, we also got two Atari branded consoles. And these consoles are so cool. We have the Atari 2600 Plus, and we also have the Atari Game Station Pro. Both of these consoles are very different and celebrate Atari in completely different ways. And I think they may appeal to different types of gamers. And so I'm gonna compare the two. And to help me out with this, I've reached out to my nephew, Will, and his fiance, Nicole. This is gonna be a really fun video. Let's take a look. We're gonna start with the first console that frankly, I never expected to get. That is the brand new Atari 2600 Plus. For a while now, Atari has had their name out there with these plug and play systems, which we're gonna to get to, but this is the first time that they've really dug into the nostalgia on the original 2600. And the big feature of this is that it plays Atari 2600 and 7800 game cartridges, the real physical media. But it modernizes the experience by putting the display out to HDMI. So basically making it very easy to, to play on your modern television. And let me be clear, there are no games built into this, although it does come with a cartridge that has some games built onto it, but it's important to know if you're gonna get this thing, that means you are gonna start collecting Atari 2600 and 7800 game cartridges. And the Atari 2600 Plus comes in at $130. Now, part of the joy of making this video was bringing in Will and Nicole to mess around with this because they are significantly younger than me and they have never seen one of these in person. And they have never used one or even held the joystick. And so I knew it was gonna be kind of a hard sell, but I felt like my job was to try to find games that would convince them about how fun Atari games could actually be. Now getting back to the system itself, you can see it is basically just a smaller version of that classic console. I just absolutely love the job that they did here. You could tell that they knew exactly how to make this. It has all the right switches. They feel really good, but yet again, it outputs HDMI, which is awesome. And yes, you are gonna be using a legit Atari joystick. So, you know, if you've never messed around with one of these before, it only has one button. It just has directions and one button. It's hilarious. What are you doing with the control? No, you drowned, babe. That was so sad. Oh, oh my okay. God. Wait, what happened? Oh no, and while occasionally Atari games will get a bad rap, you know, people will say that they're too simple, but I would argue it's the fact that it was so difficult to make these games just even run that often the developers had to focus on making them fun. Basically the way that this thing works is you plug in an original Atari cartridge in here and then it dumps the ROM and then runs it via an emulator called Stella. And Stella has been around for a long time, years, maybe even decades at this point. And it's important to know that it's running emulation here, which isn't really a big deal because again, Atari games are so old and frankly so simple, but it's not doing anything fancy like an FPGA, which does lead to a couple things. And the first one being is that there's not 100% compatibility across the entire library. It, it hits probably, I would say 99% of the games, but there are a few of them that do not work. For instance, a huge bummer for me is that one of the best games on the Atari doesn't play on this, and that is Pitfall 2. Now, the reason for that is, is because the Pitfall 2 cartridge has extra chips on there to enhance the sound. Well, when you put the cartridge into the 2600 Plus, it pulls the ROM off, but it doesn't have access to that chip. And there is a couple examples of this. I wanna point you to their website because they do have a compatibility chart. So 
You know, if there is a specific game that you must be able to play on this, well, you're gonna wanna check that before you actually drop the cash. In addition to using the real Atari joysticks, it also supports the paddle controls. This was something I was very curious to introduce to Will and Nicole because, you know, if you think about it, a lot of modern games that you'd play on PC or even on consoles don't have paddles like this. And yet on the Atari, there were a bunch of them that were really fun to play. So I was very curious to see how they would react to some of these. The first paddle game that I let them play is Warlords and Immediately they got it and they loved it. Get it! <laughs> He's just toying with me. <laughs> this is kind of like multiplayer Pong where you're trying to protect your warlord with its wall, this castle, and they were getting animated. This is really funny to watch. What? <laughs> I curved the bullet. <laughs> Stop, I don't like this game anymore. What is it called? What? <laughs> Another paddle game that they checked out is Kaboom by Activision. And that game, man, that was making them sweat. It's funny because if you've never played that game, you don't realize just how hard that is. But uh, I ended up kicking their butt at it, which is pretty awesome. I should mention that this is not the first console to support physical Atari cartridges. Actually, Hyperkin did it a couple years ago with the Retron 77, which is actually a really cool system. I reviewed it on my channel and liked it a lot. But there is something to be said, getting a console like this from actually Atari that, again, just hits that nostalgia. Often when people mention these emulated clone systems, the, the subject of latency comes up. Now, I don't have tools to accurately measure latency. However, I can tell you what I feel, and I've been playing Atari games my entire life, basically, since I was like eight years old back in the late 70s. And specifically a game, you guys know it, I include it in almost every one of my intros, it's called Hero. And I will tell you that, you know, Hero played on a real Atari, definitely has some snappiness to it. Obviously there's no latency at all. And I will say that coming to something like this, I do feel a tiny bit of latency, but honestly, most people wouldn't. And it doesn't really affect the gameplay at all. And again, I think this just comes back to the fact that these games are so simple and easy to emulate, but I wanted to mention it in case people are concerned. As for the games that Will and Nicole really enjoyed, uh, there was a couple actually. They really dug the original Pitfall. It's funny because people who haven't played Pitfall are kind of surprised at how good that game is. Also, they really got addicted to a couple newer homebrew games. Uh, the first one being Fall Down. That's a really simple game where you're simply just trying to fall down holes and therefore you own that layer. And so you're trying to battle each other to do so. I won. I won. Get, get on this. Team 41, please. <laughs> and the other was a really fun game called Wall Jump Ninja, where basically it is a one button game where you're simply just trying to get as far as you can as this wall behind you is slowly kind of pushing you forward. It seems really simple, but it's actually very addictive. Oh my god, there's lava! Oh my god. Just I think you got spikes though. And then check out this crazy cartridge that comes with 10 games on it, but the way that you access them is with the dip switches on the back. And this is hilarious because this is such an alien concept to these two. They couldn't believe it. It was so weird for them to push dip switches to basically change what game they wanted to play. When it comes to the visuals, as you might expect, they look very sharp, very clean. It's cool because it has two modes. It has a widescreen mode, and then it also allows you to put it in four by three aspect ratio, which is how I prefer to play these games. I don't really like it when games are stretched. I think it looks pretty weird, but I know some people, they prefer to have it take up the entire screen. For me, I like the fact that you can make it look more like an old school CRT. Now let's go ahead and check out the Atari Game Station Pro. This is an officially licensed console and it was made by My Arcade. And this one's coming in at $100 and is a very different type of experience than the 2600 Plus. This comes with 200 games. However, not all of those are the classic Atari games that you might be expecting. There's about 138 of them that are Atari and then they pad them out with some bonus games. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit. 
And as you see here, it looks completely different, completely unique. Although I have to say it actually looks a little bit closer to the Atari 7800, where that one had like kind of a chrome and black look to it. So actually, I really like the look of this. It also comes with their own take on the classic Atari joystick, but again, upgraded kind of for modern gamers. For instance, it comes with additional buttons. It also has that dial there that will function as a paddle controller. It has those extra red buttons on the bottom there that will let you go to home, you'll select and start. And these are 2.4 gigahertz wireless joysticks. So they're kind of a modern take on that classic design. And one of my favorite things about when you have all this set up and turned on is that you can see here, they have dynamic LED lights on everything. So that looks pretty cool. But like I said, this has a bunch of games built into it. So to be clear, it doesn't support putting in physical cartridges. Everything needs to be on the device itself. And the selection is pretty interesting. It's a mishmash collection of Atari games. And it's not just the 2600, although there are definitely a lot of them on here, but they also have Atari 5200 games on here and 7800 games and arcade games. And so it's a pretty wide range of games here. And honestly, it's kind of fun to go through here and explore them. <laughs> oh my God, you can totally curve the bullets. You like hit no, me like shoot, shoot while you're turning, shoot while you're turning and it like, what? You are really jumping through time and also technology with these different games. So you can play something very, you know, simplistic that came out on the Atari 2600, but then you can jump over to maybe the better version that came out in the arcades or jump to the 5200, which obviously not a lot of people had at the time, or even the 7800, which sometimes was the best version of them all. Now, playing these games, I will say that the controller is kind of weird. It's sort of a hit and miss controller. <sighs> <sighs> It obviously has a similar shape to the original, but the three buttons is there because obviously you're gonna be playing more complex games sometimes, especially on the 5200 and maybe the arcade. But it's weird because sometimes you'll need to use the, the top thumb button, sometimes you'll need to use the trigger, and sometimes you, you'll need to use the one that's down on the base. And it's really weird. I will say for the most part that I do like the dial that emulates a paddle game, that works pretty well, way better than I expected it to. And this was another scenario where Will and Nicole were trying a lot of these games for the very first time. And it's so interesting to get their point of view from gamers that have been playing games their whole life, but they're going back and they're kind of looking at history a little bit, where a lot of this stuff comes from. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... He's threatening this game. Oh my God, he's got a plan. And they were having a great time. It was really fun to see. It's fun to see them kind of, I don't know, I guess they, they, they had a preconceived notion about what these simplistic games are gonna be like. I'm not saying that they thought they were gonna be lame, but you know, when you're younger, you assume, you know, that maybe something's not gonna be as cool as what you're playing today but they were immediately sold on a lot of these titles. They were again hooked on Warlords, this time the arcade version. And I have a theory and it's because again, for the most part, I don't think there's actually a, a paddle controller out there for modern games. And so that is one of the things that, that these Atari games and these arcade games can bring. I mentioned that this has bonus games and in there, it's really interesting because these are, these are all over the place. These are basically just, a lot of kind of like uh, Pico Interactive games that are, I guess they're kind of resurrected games or homebrew games that they were able to license and put on here as a bonus. It does feel a little jarring to play these because they don't feel like they're part of the Atari collection at all. But are you gonna complain when something has extra games built into it? Probably not. And speaking of extra games, one of the really cool benefits of the GameStation Pro is that it gives you the ability to load your own game ROMs on an SD card. And it's very easy to do, which is really important for me because I've mentioned it before, but some of my favorite 2600 games actually came from Activision. And for some reason, almost all of these Atari consoles that they put out every year never have any Activision games on it. And those are the best ones. 
So the first thing that I did was put all of my favorite games on the SD card, and now they're immediately available in here. And what's cool is, again, it doesn't have to be just Atari games. You can actually put 7800 games on there. You can also put MAME ROMs on there and it supports save states. Now you typically don't need those for the more simplistic Atari 2600 games, but for some of the more recent games, some of the more advanced games, it's a nice option. Overall, we had a really good time playing with the GameStation Pro. I love the menu system. The design of the console is really cool. I'm not crazy about the joystick, but you know, it works. And now that we've had time playing around with both of these, who's the audience for this? Who's the consumer? I would say the 2600 plus is going to be for the the gamer who is probably older like me who grew up with the atari remembers what it was like to to play a real atari and probably has a bunch of atari cartridges already in their their collection it's the guy like me who loves collecting physical media and slamming in that cartridge and playing the game you know on a real joystick that's what i want but I will say, thankfully, most Atari games are not very expensive. You can find them easily pretty much in any retro gaming store, and often they're a buck, two dollars, five dollars maybe. They're not typically expensive. You know, if you were to spend a hundred dollars at a retro gaming expo or at a local store, maybe even going into a pawn shop, you, you would probably get dozens and dozens of games for this. And then I would say that the GameStation Pro is someone who is looking for a great value and also ease of use, plug and play. It comes with over 200 games built into it and you could add thousands more to it on an SD card. It's the type of thing I would have set up at a party where you're gonna have a bunch of people who might be gamers, might not be gamers, who just wanna walk up, grab the controller and play something quickly. They may not want to mess around with a physical cartridge, maybe cleaning it or getting it to work, you know, that sort of stuff. But I would love to know what you think. It's kind of an amazing time to be an Atari fan these days because they seem to be on a roll. And I want to give a thank you to Will and Nicole helping me make these videos. It's so much easier for me to film them playing than me trying to set up the camera myself and try to film me in every different angle. So I definitely appreciate them coming over. They were actually very excited to do this video. They were they were excited because again, they had never messed around with an Atari anything before. And as always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.